Hey guys, this is kind of a test. I am in my horse trailer with living quarters and I don't know how I got this um, Sumi thing, but I kind of like it. <laughs> Gives me a kind of a nighttime atmosphere even though it is early afternoon and I am coming at you live from the horse trailer in South Florida. So I don't know if I even have anybody watching yet. I don't know how my feed is going because I am on the horrible HughesNet, um, HughesNet for losers. <laughs> oh, look, it's Victoria. Hello, Victoria. Good to see you. So let me know if you can hear me and see me despite my, um, my crazy filter I've got going on here. I kind of wish it was a makeup filter because I don't wear a whole lot of makeup these days. But I wanted to talk to you about something that is in the news right now and um, and hit me personally. And I uh, want to talk about catfishing. If you don't know what that is, great thank you for the sound check, Victoria. Yeah, it's cosmic. So if you don't know what catfishing is, hi Deborah. Um, I'll let the audience build up a little bit, but catfishing is where you believe you're talking to somebody who's not real. You're having a relationship basically with somebody who doesn't exist. Uh, not that it's a bot or, or some kind of a, an AI, but it might be one real person could be more than one real person, could be two, three, four, could be a whole gang of people who are trying to toy with your emotions in an effort to get money. And that's what it's all about is getting money. Hey guys, I'm so glad you can see me. So this hit home for the past several months and uh, the last time I talked about this on my show was what, I think it was June or July when I was at the horse show in Miami and I told you guys that a dear friend of mine was being catfished and this really scary thing about being catfished is that the person who's being catfished doesn't know it and won't believe it even if you tell her or him hey that doesn't sound like a real person in fact they go to great lengths to make you you know come to their side and commiserate with them on their, you know, relationship with the soldier in Afghanistan who's special ops. And okay, right there, if you are having an online uh, relationship with somebody who is special ops and in some kind of military duty, um, hi Jillian. Uh, then you are definitely uh, with a catfisher. They're really, think about it, anybody who is in the army and they're doing some kind of special ops mission, they don't have time to chat with you for hours and hours every night. Like, seriously. Think about the amount of time that these people put in trying to, uh, you might think it's get to know you, but what it is really is something called the grooming process. Hi, William. So when you start to groom somebody, you try to gain their trust. And that takes a long time for some people. Then again, there are other people who are so desperate to be loved or to feel good about themselves that they will believe the catfisher right away when they tell them things like, you're so beautiful, you're so wonderful, oh, you're my everything. And they fall in love really fast and they want you to fall right down a rabbit hole until you are so enwrapped with them that you will do anything, including send them a lot of money. So I told you guys how I was going through this with my friend and she wouldn't believe it. And I kept trying to tell her that he wasn't real and she had other friends trying to tell her that he wasn't real, but she just didn't want to believe it. And finally, this person was making plans to come and meet her and actually take her on a trip to California. And uh, Ray and I were like, oh my God, if this is real, yeah, I guess this is like a thing this week. It's, it's going to be 
all over the news and my friend will be all over the news for it because she contacted the local news stations and she's making a bit of a spectacle of herself um i i don't know if that's because she lost twenty five thousand dollars and wants to try to get it back that's a huge chunk of money twenty five thousand dollars can you imagine giving twenty five thousand dollars to a stranger I, I can't even and I warned her and I said girl if he asks you for money that's when you hang up the phone or you stop the chat and you leave hi Clarissa we're talking about my friend who got catfished and she lost twenty five thousand dollars but you know yes she was she was coerced but she did it of her own free will even though she had close friends like me saying you know what don't if he wants money he's not real he doesn't really love you he's he may not be a real person in fact my nickname for this guy was the nigerians i just called him the nigerians i was like imagine it's a group of nigerians and they're you know on a phone bank and and what different one gets assigned to you every day I mean, she was falling for these stories about a dead wife whose own sister killed her and their baby, you know, nephew, his son. I mean, they tell these stories that are so flipping unbelievable. It is really hard to believe that anybody would fall for them. And yet here she was like hook, line and sinker. And she would send me these stories these things that he was writing to her and I would be like I mean I I wasn't it's not that I was laughing at her but I was like really and what made me you know think twice was that she really wanted to believe this stuff that she was in relationships with people who maybe weren't so nice with her and told her things about herself that were nasty and designed to erode her self-confidence so that when she started talking to somebody who actually i'm seeing like wait a minute uh, let me just see what's outside of the do we have a storm Ooh, ooh! look how crazy it looks out here all right, well, anyway, I'm going back into my trailer. <laughs> so anyway, um, and it's not that she was a lonely person. She had lots of good friends. Um, she dated, she, like, she could have anyone. She is an absolutely beautiful person with a beautiful heart. She is a good person. And she is, you know, she's a dear person. But unfortunately, she wanted to believe this guy's lies. I mean, to everything that he said to her, she was like, she was believing it was true and it was sad. And I didn't, I didn't want to like bust her bubble. In fact, Ray was like, I hope we're wrong. But you know, we clearly, we weren't wrong. And it, and it got to the point where, um, I knew he was going to ask for money because he was claiming to be stuck in Russia and, you know, had to fly out via Tel Aviv and Dubai and just all this crazy stuff. And, you know, I was finally like, girl, this, this isn't real. This, you know, you, you have to, you have to like stop believing this guy because these stories he's telling you are really, they're getting crazier by the minute. And, and like big, huge, long things. If you were seriously stationed in Afghanistan and running away from the Taliban, do you think you're going to take some time out to hide behind a rock and write a love poem to a woman that's like 80 lines long? I don't think so. So anyway, I finally, you know, was like, look, he's not real. And instead of her admitting that I was right and she was being asked for money, but she didn't tell me that because I already told her that that was a red flag. But, um, you know, she, she was like, well, you do this and you do that. And it was all about me. So one of the problems with the being involved with a, somebody who's involved with the catfisher 
is you know what they do to the messenger <laughs> when you try to tell them the truth they shoot the messenger and I got shot she shot me hard she was like oh when you were first with Ray you never saw him I'm like I did see him I mean we we didn't see each other a lot like maybe once a week but it wasn't like he was a he was a person I didn't know who he was I mean it, you know you met him at a gas station I did I met Ray at the gas station I did but you know what I would rather meet a real person at the gas station than online where he's supposedly in uh, Fallujah and <laughs> Yes, I met my true love at the gas station. I did. I freely admit it. I'm not embarrassed to say it either. I think there's a lot worse places that you can meet somebody if not at the gas station. So I think that this isn't about Ray and me. And obviously Ray and I are, are you know, moving right along. <laughs> and we are getting married next month. Ah, next month. And for those of you who don't know, we have decided to do an online wedding so everybody can attend. We are not going to have any wedding guests. We are going to have it. Um, I wanted to call it COVID friendly, but one of my friends is like, you can't call it COVID friendly. You don't want to be friendly to the COVID. So no, of course, you know, I don't want anyone coming to my wedding and saying this is a super spreader event. So I've just, you know, no, we're just going to have a closed set. And one of the most wonderful things about my wedding to Ray is that my officiant is my best friend that I grew up with since we were 14 years old, my Gabor. So Gabor has, um, she's been ordained as a minister just to marry us. So I'm super excited about that. I mean, how cool to have your best friend marry you. So that's what we're doing. We'll be on a closed set at an undisclosed location somewhere on a beautiful beach. And that's the, that's the plan is we're going to be on a beach. So, and if you hear that noise, it's my air conditioner because it is hot in Florida. Super, super hot. Clarissa Marie met her true love in a hotel lobby when she was in there visiting her friend that worked there and has been married for 22 years. That is fantastic. So, you know, especially our situation is that Ray is fighting cancer. And, you know, planning a wedding, when you're in your 50s, it's kind of like, really, I, I don't care about the wedding. I care about getting married. And, you know, there's no way then that anybody can say, oh, although these days, I guess that's changed. But, you know, that you can't be with somebody when they're in the hospital, that you can't visit them or that you can't have any access to them. Because when Ray first was diagnosed with cancer, I was just the girlfriend, you know, and, and I wasn't allowed to visit him in the hospital. And that really affected me. So I'm hearing some thunder. I don't know if you just heard that. But uh, I, I, wanted, I wanted to talk about the catfishing because, so my friend's going to be on, uh, on some major TV news shows, which she watches TV, so she'll be able to see them. I'll just get mine online. Her story is blowing up online and it's kind of, uh, kind of crazy because the guy who uh, is catfishing her used the picture of a dude who's like this famous journalist, like a football journalist in Brazil named Fabio. <laughs> it's too funny. I mean, now it's funny, but it, it, it's also tragic. It's also really sad that this happened. And, you know, even though her friends were all telling her that it wasn't true and um, you know, this Nick person wasn't real. She didn't want to believe us. And I think therein lies the problem is when you are so desperate and so wanting to believe a lie, that's when you have to look deep inside yourself and wonder why, why do I want to believe a lie? And it's not like she doesn't have people who love her. She does. She is not alone in the world. She's, she's a beautiful, vibrant, amazing woman. And she deserves better than some liar who's scamming her for her money. So I have to wonder, you know, what would drive a person to be so sad and desperate that they want to believe a lie, even though other people, and maybe, 
maybe other people saying to you, this isn't true, this isn't true, it might make you, you know, double down on it because that goes there too. So, you know, some people you get caught in the lie. And so it made me think about the rest of this country and believing in the lie that is the presidency right now. That, that I believe is a total lie. And we see how his lie is affecting the lives of other people. And that the people who want to believe in the, um, you know, most fair election ever in the history of elections, I mean, come on, you guys have to wake up at some point and be like, this stuff is not real. So I just heard something like knocking on my door. I don't know. I'm going to open it. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's starting to rain. All right. I got to go back up to the house. And um, how you like my Jeep? Pretty cool, huh? So... Anyway, if you're in this situation and you don't want to admit it and you don't want anyone to know, even though your friends are like, girl, that, that guy that, you know, loves you more than his mom. <laughs> I mean, this guy was saying stuff like, you're like my mother and I lost her and I'm going to lose you. I mean, there are all of these like telltale things that they say that's uh, very, it's very clear. Ooh, we got a little bit of a storm going on out here. So I'm going to have to say goodbye for now and leave my horse trailer behind. But um, anyway, that's what I wanted to talk to you about catfishing. Uh, if you're involved in it, if it's happening to you, you know, cut it off. If anybody asks you for money and you've never met them, huge, huge red flag. Think about it. So 